Okay, so uh, rudder gudgeons and pintles at last. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a number of years, but the big holdup was uh, locating the right size. Uh, this particular rudder is an inch and three quarters thick. Uh, so the, the size, uh, everything I looked at just, just would not fit or was uh, ridiculously expensive. Uh, so currently I have two. Uh, the lower one here is original. The pintle part is embedded in the rudder. The upper one is actually the steering quadrant for the steering pedestal that I removed, and I'll, and I'll show this in a minute. Uh, so the ones I was able to find, um, solid bronze, I did get these from a company called uh, Davy and Company in the UK. And they're, they're both different. So on this larger one, the pintle goes on the transom. The gudgeon goes on the rudder. On the slightly smaller one, the pintle goes on the rudder and the gudgeon goes on the transom. So uh, my strategy here is to, uh, to be able to remove this. I'm going to tie the top of the rudder off to the push pit. Uh, remove this, this strap, the, uh, the steering quadrant, uh, and then the weight of the top of the rudder should be taken up by the push pit, uh, and this will allow me to kind of lift, lift this off, lift off the rudder off of that. Um, there is a uh, bronze cotter pin that I have to remove, but the rudder itself, I'm told, weighs about 110 or so pounds. I'm not sure if that includes the, uh, the teak rudder head, but uh, I'll find out. So here's a view of that um, top gudgeon, or actually the, the steering quadrant. Uh, it's a big, solid piece of bronze. Um, and one of the reasons I want to take this off is, I mean, it does take up a lot of space. And, and I do want to use this, this rear lazarette for a uh, stern anchor chain, chain logger. So uh, I think once I take this off, I should be able to get the rudder uh, removed. Okay, so that was not too bad. Um, I had to remove the mounting pieces here um, for the quadrant. Um, and of course I've tied off the rudder head to the push pit, supporting it with no problem. Uh, down here at the bottom, there's my pintle. Here's the gudgeon mounted on the keel. Uh, there's a little bit of play in the rudder on this, so I'm going to see about uh, possibly getting a bushing for that. Um, also, note that the rudder here has been recessed because um, the quadrant piece here is only an inch and a half, while the rudder was inch and three quarters. So that's that's why they they must have recessed it when they did this. Uh, so I'll probably just uh, fill that in with some fiberglass or epoxy or both. Uh, but inside the house because it's very cold out. So I've removed all of that hardware with the, uh, the quadrant. And I now have a rectangular hole in the transom that I'm going to close. Uh, obviously that hole's been there for years and years, so it's it's not like uh, you know it needed to be reinforced. Uh, so rather than you know this is this is well above the waterline. Rather than doing uh, you know a large uh, round taper, I think I'm just going to kind of feather it in, put some uh, put some epoxy and glass in there. And I should really mention that the purpose of this project is not only to replace that steering quadrant with the proper gudgeon and pintle. But to also add a third one, um, uh, the early Contessas only came with two gudgeon and pintles from the factory. Um, this was this is an original one, the, my bottom one, which I'm retaining. 
And then there was one where I removed the, the quadrant. So uh, I'm adding a third one uh, with these two. Uh, the larger one will go in the middle. Typically that goes at the bottom of the rudder, but since I'm using that one, it'll go in the middle. Okay, so uh, I remounted the rudder temporarily, I just uh, tied it off again up there. Um, and I did this mainly uh, to kind of align the gudgeons and pintles. Uh, number one, the straps here, I wanted to make sure that they were perpendicular to the leading edge of the rudder. Um, and I just used a uh, carpenter square for that um, and just marked it with the, with the tape. But also uh, the transom mount, uh, I wanted to make sure that where I'm going to be drilling the holes for that, that there's nothing on the other side of the transom, um, you know, that would interfere with the mounting of those. So bo both of those look clear. Um, I did make some allowance for uh, putting in a nylon washer uh, for all three of those, actually. Um, one other thing that I want to mention is I did consider uh, modifying the old quadrant. Uh, I could have just kind of cut this off and then mounted this to that very heavy stainless rod uh, that was on there. But I don't like that for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, I don't like the way the, the, the rudder here is recessed. Uh, number two, when, if I had cut that, it would actually, there wouldn't be very much clearance between uh, the gudgeon and, the, and the, the transom unless I made that very thin. And number three, um, I want to keep that intact. That's something I may very well use in the future for something else. So I think I made the right decision by just getting new bronze ones. Okay, epoxy time. So I'm here inside the house. A nice blazing fire to heat things up and I have drilled the holes for the straps uh, filled in the recessed part where the old uh, quadrant was attached and here you can see I actually did it twice um, when the strap was too low here uh, this piece would actually hit if the rudder tried to come off if it, if it broke away from the pins, which it's supposed to do. So I did go back and forth on this. Um, I was, uh, I was uh, thinking about just cutting off this part of the, of the quadrant, which by the way is cracked. So I'm glad I actually removed the, the pedestal. Um, but uh, number one, the shaft uh, actually is cracked as stainless will often do. Uh, but I, what I was going to do is actually cut this part off and use one of these and maybe a stainless steel bolt. Uh, and who knows, maybe I'll add that later for a fourth gudgeon. But um, for now, I'm going to go with this. Uh, I'm going to, uh, these, these gudgeons are designed so that the rudder can lift off if I, if I ground out and uh, break away and float. And then you retrieve the rudder if that happens. That way you don't break it. Uh, same thing with the original gudgeon. You can see the little hole for the cotter pin there. Um, this is interesting because I, I did over drill these because there's wood core and the construction, at least in this area, is such that there's fiberglass, plywood, then some sort of bronze plate, then plywood, and then fiberglass. So I think that that bronze plate actually attached the old uh, original gudgeon uh, to this anode and same thing with this one probably because this pin the pintle is stainless and the, the gudgeons are actually bronze so you have the electrolysis happening and uh, the anode has been doing its job you can see it's kind of pitted so hopefully this sets up for my wife gets home and sees this huge rudder in her living room Okay, so now I've got the gudgeons and pintles installed on there temporarily. And really what I'm doing here is I'm just dry fitting the rudder uh, to determine the spacing for the transom mount. And I believe I'll need about a quarter inch spacer here and about a half inch spacer here. But I'll install that one last uh, after it's resting on that one. And that one, then I can drill for that one. 
Okay, so I've made a bit of a spacer uh, between the transom and the gudgeon here, made of G10 board. Uh, also for the middle one as well, which is not screwed in yet. And they will be painted, of course. Um, but at this point, I think I'm going to pretty much call this complete. I'm going to close the holes here at a later date. Also do some fairing there and painting. Um, but uh, I also may want to revisit the idea of utilizing that very heavy uh, quadrant and cutting it off and uh, making gudgeon out of it. Possibly to provide a fourth one or even maybe replace one of these uh, because that's much heavier. Although I'm sure it would be fine with these. They're, they're, they're pretty robust. Um, so one other thing that I will mention here is that I've had to do some work on the rudder shoe because the marina that lifted out my boat this past season uh, decided to put the strap right under the shoe and cracked all of the reinforcement that's in here, which is actually these pieces. So I've been epoxying and glassing uh, piecemeal uh, you know, as the weather allows uh, when it's above 40 degrees. I'll be working on that and I will provide a update at a later time as far as whether or not I keep these gudgeons on there.